It's 8.07 on WMAL, getting you to work today on your morning commute with a special guest, Ann Coulter. She is the author of about 3,000 books, but the latest (laughs) one is the most important one because it just dropped yesterday. It's called In Trump We Trust, E Pluribus Awesome. And hi, Ann. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? We're, I'm good, and I can't wait to read this. I haven't read it yet. It's I'm really sorry. fun. I bet it is. And, you know, in Trump we trust. So already I'm hearing people, oh, this whole deification of Donald Trump. Why replace God's name with Donald Trump? <laughs> you Trumpsters, you're also saying, you know, obviously you're having fun, and this is more about our, our government. But when you say in Trump we trust, are you talking about his campaign between now and Election Day, or are you talking about Apparently the presidency? Apparently not. <laughs> yeah, there have you been, get where I'm going. There have been a few developments in the last uh, 28, uh, 24, 48 hours. And I'm not at all happy about them. I said on Hardball last night because the news broke right before I was taping and I said, it's looking like this could be the shortest book tour ever. <laughs> no, specific- Here I am, my first and last interview. But, no, I mean, I... Specifically, there's a suggestion that he may want to pull back from some of the very tough immigration stances. Well, he said he it last our, night. Yeah, yeah. Softening and, is and the word And it's he worse used. than that. Look, if you're going to sell out... Um, the expression is, if you're going to the deep end of the pool, just jump in. Don't don't indicate you're going in that direction. Paddle around, paddle in circles, because you're just going to drive your supporters crazy. Um, look, it's a pretty, it's not the biggest sellout, but why do it at all? Why why? I, I, I mean, this obsession that both political parties have had as if Americans are up at night. What about the comfort and well-being of people who have broken our laws? No, I think they're worried about jobs. They're worried about, uh, you know, Buick is now making cars in China. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. know. One of their That's biggest, kind of a big story. One of their biggest new investments. Um, he, um, appear, he does a lot of events with um, the mothers of, of children who have been killed by illegal aliens. We have the H-1B visas I don't think that have been covered very much. I mean, that's not just replacing your maid's job or driving your, wage, your maid's wages down. That's replacing your kids' jobs. Um, and it's a scam. It's just a way for, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and so on to get cheap labor while we and then they bring in their elderly relatives whom we have to put on Social Security and Medicare, and you wonder why those programs are going bankrupt. Um, in fact, I would venture to say I've been wondering this for a while, and perhaps we can throw it out to your audience. Exactly how many transgenders are there in America? Because I don't see that as a huge burning issue. But I will say there are more transgenders than there are people who are staying up at night worried about the comfort <laughs> and well-being of people who have broken our laws. I mean, it's just, why is he talking about it at all? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I mean, look, what I think he a clearer way to have put it and a l- way less likely to incite and enrage his his fans is. I mean, I always thought he was going to have a humane policy on on the illegals already here. But why not just say anyone here illegally is breaking United States laws? They do not have a constitutional right to stay in this country. We will determine who stays and who goes based on the best interests of the United States. Just say that. Why Why do right. we have to hear about, oh, the poor, hardworking, well, illegal with the children, and I'm, I could be softening my policy on that? Which And, and the, you know, say, what changed with Donald Trump? Well, let's face it. Something did change with Donald Trump, or at least with his campaign, over the last 10 days, seven days, actually. Uh, we went from Corey Lewandowski, that allowed Donald Trump to win the primaries, beating out 16 other Republicans, defying all odds. Right. We then went to Paul Manafort, and, well, that didn't seem to go well. And now we've got Kellyanne Conway. I know that you talk a lot in your book about political consultants, and one of the <laughs> strengths of Donald Trump was that he didn't have these exactly. political consultants. Do you think this is the influence of Kellyanne Conway? Well, and- I don't want to. I don't want to blame anyone. I mean, it could, or the, Steve Bannon, for that matter. I don't mean to leave him out. The allegation is that um, that Roger Ailes is advising Trump, um, and I know that you know Fox News' policy is to spend every waking minute worrying about the fate of illegal aliens because the donors want the cheap labor. Um, so you know who knows who it is. Um, you know it could be, and I'm. I like him. I, I'm not. I'm not casting aspersions, but who knows? It could be Ivanka. It could be Jared Kushner. So I, we don't know who it is, but I don't like it. I know that much. Yeah. And, and you know Trump. This is the this this not is a very necess- well, but. Um, uh, look, do you think this instinct, is something he's coming up with, or do you think this is the I, influence of consultants? It seems to be. I think 
my suspicion is he's panicked over the low polls, so he goes, and who do you check with? You check with the same idiots who destroyed your rivals' campaigns. Mm. And what what does everyone in Washington say? There's something in the water down here. Americans, let us tell you, we know salt of the earth Americans because we've never been outside the Beltway. All they're worried about is the comfort and well-being of illegals. What will we do about people who have broken our laws? No, that's really, really far down on the list. Yes. Look, he's well, still going to build the wall and compare it I mean, to compare it to and he will let ice do its job and look right now the obama administration is fighting the deportation of illegal aliens who have committed murders and rapes and drunk driving so look it's not like there's no difference in the two policies we're getting a wall we're getting um the deportation of criminal illegal aliens certainly and and by the way even legal immigrants who commit felonies are supposed to be deported like that mm-hmm. and they're not being deported yeah. But, I, I, I mean, just th- this past week is just, why are you torturing your supporters? You but, are but, not picking up a single vote. But, <laughs> Ann, hold on a minute. I mean, if you feel this passionately about it, and, and, and I can tell you do, I mean, obviously this is something, one of the reasons why you have been such a vocal supporter of Donald Trump. If he walks away in a significant way from the policies... I don't think that, he's doing that. Well, what, well what, then what is he doing? I mean, they talk about softening his position this on... Is, it's one portion of it. It's the it's, deportation it's this, aspect. It's the least important portion. I just think this is... Um, yeah, I mean, it concerns you that he's listening to people he shouldn't be listening to, whomever whomever that is. And I'm again, I have no idea. So, bottom line, this irritates you, but not enough to walk away from your continued support of Donald Trump. I mean, we know he's the only one and the only presidential candidate we've ever had who's giving us a wall. I, I, I we're getting a wall. <laughs> we're definitely getting a wall. And, and who's going to pay for that wall? Uh, <laughs> Mexico, exactly. And it's going to have a big, big gold tease on it. And it is going to be a beautiful <laughs> wall. Be a big, beautiful wall. So look, if he does that, and I suppose just lets ICE do do his job at all, it's it's more the campaigning strategy that I find annoying here. Because what was so appealing about Trump? Why, why did he get more votes than any Republican presidential candidate in history? Unlike. Every other Republican, and I, I mean, I have no hope for, for Democrats on, on immigration once they figured out the illegals were getting amnesty, having babies, and, oh, wow, all these third world immigrants are voting for us. I guess we don't care about poor working class Americans anymore. Um, but, but th- I mean, this has just been nonstop from my party, listening to the campaign consultants and saying stupid things, talking about things that don't matter. I'm, I go through in my book, just I read through all of the, all of the debates, and it was so much more striking reading the debates later than watching them at the time, um, how Trump is the only one who answers questions. You know, the media has this thing, or journalists, when they don't know what else to say to Trump, they just claim he has no policy specifics. He's the only one with policy yeah. specifics. What was John Kasich's position yeah. on a wall? Right. All right, hold that thought. We got much more straight ahead with Ann Coulter. Right now it's 71 degrees. It is 816 on WMAL. Speaking of gorgeous, we continue with Ann Coulter. Her live in studio, who has graced us with her presence. We're talking about her new book, In Trump We Trust. E pluribus, awesome. Uh, great title. And of course, listen, we've been dwelling on the news of the last 24 hours where Donald Trump has suggested that there might be some softening in his policy, specifically about the deportation of those who are already in this country illegally. I would like to focus on some other things in your book. And most specifically, you just mentioned the media, how the media is fixated on Trump not having policies. This is something that's been driving me batty, where they say, oh, you don't, he has no policy. He's got a great tax policy. He's got the immigration policy. I have He's a got whole a cra- chapter on this where um, I, I learned from this is my 12th book and I had one longtime editor um, and he said the only way he used to edit me was by de-exampling me because you know I come from being a lawyer so and also I'm used to liberals attacking me so not only are all my books footnoted um, but for every statement I'd make, I'd give like 10 examples. And he said, Anne, give three examples, move on. So I've pretty much learned from him. But when I was writing the no policy specifics chapter, because it used to drive me crazy every time I'd go into the kitchen to get a cup of coffee, there's somebody on TV saying, complaining that Trump, that was just the go-to line. Um, You know, he doesn't do nuance, doesn't like policy, has no policy specifics. But what does he mean by this? I mean, it was getting so crazy. It was like, you know, responding to JFK, we're going to go to the moon. And the Media, what's your policy on going to the moon? <laughs> Trump was the only one, and, and you know, constantly pushing out, putting out these detailed policy papers. But by contrast, so I, that was one I did not de example. There are 50 examples in the media of him <laughs> saying he has no policy specifics. I just say to the re- readers, you don't want to read 50 examples. I ask, screw you. I'm giving you 50 <laughs> examples. And that's intermingled with. 
the policy papers coming out, the statements he was giving with with uh, specifics that no one else had, was giving us this year or has ever given us. Um, and just coincidentally, as I was going through Nexus, looking up the no policy specifics quotes, I kept noticing the headlines of a lot of these articles and and news stories were always, you know, Trump tops polls, Trump pulling ahead. So I threw those headlines in, too. <laughs> um, so you can see how, how the campaign proceeded. But no, he is the only one giving us specifics what the other ones do, which I'd never, I'd, I never realized how much I hated the Republican Party before um, until Trump came along. And I think it is a lot because of the consultants. Um, but reading through the debates, what I noticed was that how they, how our candidates and Democrats do too, is what politicians do, how they avoid answering a question. And what they do is um, they read um, a book on how to pick up girls and learned mirroring, um, where you just repeat back what the person has just said to you. So, you know, Marco Rubio, what will you do about the economy? Well, let me tell you how Amazon works and our economy has changed in the 21st century. But okay, you've just restated what the issue is. All of them, when it comes to what are you going to do about illegal a- yeah. um, aliens and border security? All of them. People are frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> People are very frustrated. Oh, and then there's the listening answer. I'm listening. I'm listening. And you know who did it? It's like it? a Miss America pageant where they yeah. always repeat the question <laughs> if that's first. That's all then, it yeah. is. You never get to the answer. Trump, God bless him, because he's not a politician. He's going to ask a question and he was challenged on stuff. Oh, right. he says he's going to bring back jobs. How is he going to bring back jobs? He didn't talk about how Amazon does business. He didn't talk about his wife and kids. Oh, the wife and kids thing. That has got to be stopped. That's another thing they all do. No one wants to hear about your wife and kids. They all think they're Reagan. Did Reagan ever talk about his family? Mm. I don't think he'd win the election if this is based on who has the nicest family. <laughs> but compare and contrast that with Hillary Clinton, who never appears before the camera and never takes questions from the press, and and she gets a pass on it. Um, no, the media is there. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, even predicting it, and you know, none of us lived through Goldwater or Nixon. But I've read about the period, and what is going on with the media now is just well, shocking and unprecedented. It, I, I can't even, and I love to hate watch TV. I can't even watch my favorite hate watching networks anymore. I don't. I'm, I find myself watching an enormous amount of like Twilight Zone and forensic files because all it is is slander. It's one thing if they're making an argument, and I can think, oh well, that's a dumb argument. All it is is slander. Yeah. Uh, which is, by the way, a name of another great book by Ann <laughs> yes, Coulter. Uh, but Ann, you talk about how during the primary process, Trump was able to sort of reverse the media's role and the stuff that they've done. But now here we are going toward the general election and they've clearly chosen sides. Uh, it, it, are you troubled by the fact that, number one, the media isn't even hiding it? New York Times is openly discussing yes. how they've got a bias against Donald mm-hmm. Trump. And Trump, in some ways, has not been able to reverse that trend. Although, one would argue, the fact that he's even within striking distance right. of Hillary Clinton is a victory. I mean, I still think he has um, a better chance of winning than losing, even when the polls were down. He has time to make it up. I just think people – this is an important election. I think when people focus as it gets closer um, – I I think he probably should not have panicked. Much more with Ann Coulter straight ahead. It's now 822. It's the whole hour, so we're going to get to Hillary Clinton. She's got plenty to say about her. But I just want to wrap it up here. The merging of the media uh, against Trump and this whole immigration policy came to a head yesterday in the Washington Post. Did you see this, Ann, where they said, uh, in basic economic terms, illegal immigrants meet the labor's market demand for low-wage employees, and they go on to specifically cite washing our dishes and mowing our lawns. Aren't they basically saying, you got to let us exploit these people? We need them. (laughs) No, at least they're being honest about it. Um, That is the purpose of mass low low-skilled immigration to serve the rich. Um, their servants are subsidized by the rest of us. I mean, they have to make up for those low wages with food stamps, housing subsidies, going to our schools, collecting Social Security, bringing in elderly relatives. This is a total boon for the rich, subsidized by the middle class. And the way the media paints it, the compassionate position is to right. let them come here and exploit them and have them live off government right. subsidies. The Utterly mean, self-interested. Yeah. Well, if you like that half hour with Ann Coulter, there's a whole nother half hour still to come. It's now 828. 837 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. You're listening to Mornings with them All with Brian and Larry. And this half hour, our special guest is Ann Coulter, who has a brand new book. Hey, Ann. 
And Hello. Trump we trust, E Pluribus Awesome. <laughs> uh, and good morning to you. It's good to have you here. We spent the first half hour talking a lot about Donald Trump. I'd like to refocus on uh, the other person running for the office of the presidency, Hillary Clinton. Big story came out yesterday. Associated Press did a really interesting piece of work, uh, some three years in the making, because it took them three years to actually get the documents out of the State Department about Hillary's calendar. More than half, 85 out of 154 meetings she took with individuals uh, at the State Department were people who also gave big contributions to the Clinton Foundation. There is a whole drip, drip, drip of stories about the Clinton Foundation and, and, and whether or not you had to pay at the Clinton Foundation to get favorable consideration over at the State Department. Your thoughts on this? Um, well, I haven't been following it closely, but I, I, yeah, it's... I, I'm obviously I'm I'm more focused on Trump. I probably should have told you that before we come back. So I can't give you any details of these except there is that one um I think his name is Arturo. I'll look it up during the break. But anyway, he's the one in Florida that she um fast tracked a federal loan for. He was supposed to build this was the big, you know, Haiti charity. Right. Um and he was supposed to build these um hurricane and earthquake proof homes it turns out this guy was just um he was a venezuelan he was just spending it just on spending his own money, condo right, yeah. and aspen and so on and so forth well it did a search of his name in the nexus archives to see if his name had been mentioned and b- by the way he's in prison now mm-hmm. i mean he has been prosecuted none of the money yeah, there's no this that isn't he got alleged from the, uh, the u.s taxpayer 10 million dollars yeah and it all went for he was just spending it on homes for himself and his wife um and this was a loan that was pushed through quickly because he donated to the clinton foundation um pushed through by hillary clinton as secretary of state his name has not been mentioned in the new york times that, that that tells you what we're up against, which is why I really think if I mean, if nothing else gets accomplished by by this election, people have got to stop reading the media, consuming the media, um, find, go to Breitbart and certain talk radio hosts. But if this does not fully discredit the media, I mean, this should be conservatives and Trump should be taking this opportunity to treat the United States media the way the Soviet Union treated religion. It has got to be stamped out because um, it, I, I mean, I think that is the only thing that's responsible for Trump. Trump's falling in in the polls recently. The media has been 100 percent against Trump from the beginning, but they have become hysterical basically since the convention, probably because his convention speech was so great. They will not show Trump's speeches. And for those of you listening, do not believe anything you hear about his speeches. You have to go online and watch the speeches because his speeches, starting with that convention speech, have been so magnificent, so beautiful, written by my true love, Stephen Miller. Um, (laughs) That's right. Everyone Formerly a Sessions office, is right? pitch yeah. perfect. And and people who don't even I don't have many friends who are anti-Trump, but I have a few. And even they will email me and say, this was the most unbelievable speech. This is fantastic. He could win the election on this speech. And then I watch TV and there's nothing about it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Right. After that Milwaukee speech, that was the first one that was specifically addressed to African-Americans. Um, I, I mean, we were all saying oh my gosh, this is the speech I've been waiting my whole life for a president to give. And I stayed tuned in to see what MSNBC had to say about it. You know what their big criticism was? Um, he's a liar because he kept talking about being in Milwaukee, but he was really in St. Cloud, which is like, you know, a half an hour north of Milwaukee. Well, if that's all they can say, you know it was a kick-ass speech. Um, look at Trump. Don't listen to what the media tells you about Trump. By the way, uh, just so you know, because I was watching CNN, their big gripe was there weren't enough black people in the audience to hear his speech and message up to African Americans, as if black people can't turn on the television and Not watch the speech that. and well, get the coverage. Two things about that is I do think, um, and look, I believe the polls. I don't want to discount them totally. I think Trump is going to go up in the polls as people get serious about this election and compare the two candidacies, Hillary, open borders, amnestying illegals, um, quadrupling the number of Muslim refugees versus Trump, wall, um, bringing jobs back, so on and so forth. Um, Yet and still, um, I do think there is going to be a bit of a Bradley effect in in this election. Referring to Mayor Tom Bradley, African-American in Los Angeles. And they call it, I think, the social desirability bias where people won't. I mean, would anyone who's actually voting for Hillary be hesitant to tell a pollster I'm voting for Hillary? But when you come to Trump more than than usual, and I don't want to make a big deal of this because I don't want to be one of these people who's discounting the polls. But (laughs) we know that Trump 
I say he's going to get more African-American votes than any Republican since Richard Nixon. I have many bets on it. Um, we know he's going to get a lot of Democrat votes. We know he's going to get independent votes. It's it's one thing to pull people during a Republican primary where you're polling Republicans anyway. I right. mean, they're either going to say Ted Cruz or or Trump or Rubio anyway. It's not like, you know, the poll questioner is going to say, oh, good, it's only Cruz. Now, to get a Democrat to admit he's voting for any Republican and throw in it's the Republican that the media are calling a, you know, racist Adolf Hitler. Um, so for one thing, I think there would be some hesitancy with even conservative African-Americans to be showing up. You know you're in for a fight. Right. You know you're going to get a fight on that. And also I want to throw in that Chicago incident. When Trump goes to sp- a specific black area to get, to appeal to black voters back during the campaign, his campaign is set upon by a bunch of stormtroopers beating up these peaceful. I mean, yeah, there are going to be fewer yeah. people bringing women and children to Trump events. There are going to be fewer events in specifically black neighborhoods. There was a riot at that rally, and then they and you're right. He was going to a black community. He yeah. wanted to give the message. There was a riot instituted by the black protesters, and they blamed Donald Trump for going to, to the a black. black Area. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I just want to mention Ted Cruz and Fox News blamed Trump for the violence against his protesters. More with Ag Coulter live in studio. We're talking about her book. It's in a Trump we WMAL. Currently in the nation's capital, 72 degrees. It is 846 on WMAL. We're watching Come to Talk. Brian and Larry in the house. Our special guest for the entire 8 o'clock hour is and has been Ann Coulter. And uh, this book, uh, as, you, as you begin the, the tour... You started out by saying you have some real concerns about Donald Trump and and the softening effect. Uh, so so tell me, you know, what you think is likely to happen next because there has been a backlash by the people who really do like Donald Trump and have uh, come to him because they think he's going to be very very strong on immigration and they look at this as a weakening of it. How do you think it's going to play out? I don't think it's a big weakening of the position. I think it's my complaint is more of a stylistic thing and the fear that he's listening to the same people who destroyed the candidacies of his rivals. Um, I I mean. Republicans running for office have have just got to learn that hiring a Republican campaign consultant is like stepping on an IED. And if I could just <laughs> get that through to them, uh, it, their their responsibility is to the Chamber of Commerce and the Business Roundtable. What they care about is making money. That is why they are hysterical and they're all over television. This is existential for basically all of Washington, the pollsters, the consultants, the lobbying groups, the think tanks. They are made utterly irrelevant by this campaign. I mean, how are they going to shake down credulous billionaires now? Jeb Bush had had 140 million, and he got four delegates yep. with all these, you know, idiotic consultant written lines about Washington needs a disruptor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, those horrible, horrible lines he has while, or had while weeping about illegals. Um, that I mean, I mean, this is why there is this group of Republicans. I do think, I, I mean, they act as if um, Trump is going to lose some huge swath of Republicans. Um, no, he's going to lose about 5,000 people, all who live in the greater Washington, D.C. area. Meanwhile, <laughs> you know, 60,000 Democrats and Pennsylvania changed their registration to Republican in order to vote for Trump, 20,000 in Massachusetts. Uh, Ann Coulter, I've been wanting to talk to you since the DNC, because you wrote a great column, one of the only courageous columns out there, responding to the controversy over the Khan family, the Gold Star parents, and oh, the speech yeah. that they gave waving the U.S. Constitution. This harkens back to um, what you wrote about in your book, Godless, the Church yes. of Liberalism, and which is a fantastic book as well. Could you just reflect on that a little bit and how the media took that story? This is what the left, with the Democratic Party, what they do when they're pushing heinous ideas that have zero popularity with the American people. They send, you know, some poor little orphan girl out to deliver their their policy plan and then scream bloody murder if anyone attacks w- what their heinous plan is. Well, OK, so they get this this gold star dad who, you know, by the way, as many Muslims have been um killed in combat as Muslims in uniform have or, or as other men in uniform have been killed by Muslims in our military. Right. So they've killed as many as they've been killed. Muslims in our military. Just, yes. you know, little Fort Hood little footnotes. and the incident in uh, Kuwait prior right. to the Iraq war. Right. Yeah. Now, I'm not. T- yeah. OK, great. Khan's, Khan's son is is a hero. Um, but 
what he's doing is telling us that our Constitution requires us to keep this breakneck speed up of admitting um, immigrants from Muslim countries. And we do admit more immigrants from Muslim countries post 9-11 than we did pre 9-11. Do most Americans think that's a good idea? Mm. I mean, I just, as I say in my book, Muslims must have thought when they staged 9-11, boy, are we going to be hated. But, 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 Instead, but, we're, right. you know, but building the mosques all over the world, we're bringing more of them in. The one thing that keeps the New York Times up at night is, oh, my gosh, what if ISIS gets a hold of a nuke and blows up New York? Because that could lead to Islamophobia. <laughs> and Coulter, this is what makes you so good. The book, again, in Trump We Trust, E Pluribus, awesome. And we are so honored yeah. that you came to yeah, join thank us. Thank you. Good to be here. And we know that you're going to shoot up Amazon even more than it's already shot up. Let this be a lesson to all you authors out there. Come here for an hour. Thank Thanks, Anne.